Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Note completion questions come up regularly in the IELTS listening exam, so there's a high chance of you getting one in your test. They can take many different forms, but will always be a gap fill activity of some sort, where you have to fill in missing words. You could, for example, be asked to fill in missing words in a set of notes from a lecture, or a list of instructions for a journey. There are almost endless possibilities, but as long as you have a good strategy to follow, you'll be able to answer any question you're given. Follow the advice in this lesson and you'll be well prepared. The lesson includes what are notes, sample questions, the strategy and some tips, a practice question and the answers. First, what are notes? As an English language student, you probably make notes on a regular basis. It's also common to make notes, for example, during meetings or a telephone conversation, or when browsing the internet for information on a particular topic, such as travel information for a holiday. So what sort of information do you write down when you're taking notes? And what do you not write down? Notes contain keywords and phrases, and the minimum vocabulary necessary for the information to make sense to the writer. They frequently include lists, headings and subheadings, and numbers or bullet points. Notes don't generally contain full sentences and are often ungrammatical. Here are two note completion questions from past IELTS listening papers. The recording for this first sample question is a telephone conversation between a clerk at an inquiry desk of a transport company and a man who is asking for travel information. You are required to fill in the missing information about travel options by bus and train from Bayswater to Harbour City. The recording for this second sample question is a radio broadcast about the National Arts Centre. You are required to fill in six pieces of missing information about the centre. I am going to use the second example to teach you the answer strategy and give you tips and advice on how to overcome the challenges presented by this type of question. You will have a short time to prepare before the speakers begin talking. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. First, read the instructions carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you are allowed to write for the answer. The instructions for our sample question state that you must write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. If you write more than three words, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information you give is correct. Don't lose marks over silly mistakes like this. The answers to note completion questions will usually be factual information such as names, dates, places, times and phone numbers. Next, look for a title. Not every question will have a title, but if there is one, it will tell you the context of the question. Our sample question has the title, The National Arts Centre. Knowing the context gives meaning to the information in the notes. This will help you to understand the question and give you a big clue as to what sort of information will be contained in the recording. Another important task to do in your preparation time is to try to predict what the answers might be. This will focus your mind on what to listen out for in the recording. Occasionally you will be able to predict the actual word, but mostly it is one or more of these things that you will be able to determine. The type of information required, for example, a surname, place name, date, phone number, postcode, percentage or price. Or the type of word required, such as a noun, adjective or verb. Any clues you can get will help you to understand the audio and identify the information needed for the answers. Have a go at predicting some of the answers in our note completion practice question. There are six answers to fill in, numbers 11 to 16. Pause the video to do this, then have a look at my predictions on the next slide. Here are my predictions. Answer 11 I am not sure about. Don't waste time thinking too hard. Just note down what you can easily predict. 
Answer 12 will be the name of a room or facility. 13 will be a verb in the past tense. 14 a date. 15 the name of a business or organisation. And 16 will be a number. You can see that just a few seconds spent doing this can give you a lot of information about what you need to listen for in the recording. This will greatly improve your chances of identifying the correct answers. In all types of listening questions, you need to listen out for synonyms and paraphrasing. These are something else that you might be able to predict. If you have time before the recording starts, scan the question to identify key words or phrases that are likely to be replaced by synonyms and think of some that might be used. Three that stand out are open to the public, managed by and days per year. As you're listening to the recording, remind yourself that you're not looking for the exact words as in the question, necessarily, but the same meaning. The answers will come in the same order in the recording as they are listed in the question, so you will hear answer 11 first, then answer 12 and so on. This makes it easier to pick out the answers than if they were in a random order. There are six types of vocabulary that can cause particular problems for students and some of them will almost certainly be present in note completion questions. The six types are time, numbers, prices, dates, letters and addresses. You must be able to recognise them in speech and to write them correctly in your answers. I've written a whole lesson on this topic, including eight listening exercises to help you recognise and learn these types of vocabulary. I've put a link to it in the notes below this video. The examiners will try and catch you out with distractors. A distractor is a word or a phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. So you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are some sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. The centre has always been famous for its theatrical performances, but in recent years it has become better known for operatic performances. In the original design of the building, there was a sculpture hall next to the art galleries. However, the plans were changed to include a studio for visiting performers to run workshops. The first visitors were welcomed in July 1983. No, sorry, that was when the centre was completed. It wasn't open to the public until September of that year. The use of but and however are particularly common distractors, but there are many different words and phrases that can be used to change or correct a piece of information, so be alert for them. My final tip is to never leave a blank space on the answer sheet. If you miss an answer, take an educated guess. This gives you at least some chance of getting it right. Don't stress about a missed answer or it will affect your ability to answer the next set of questions. Just make your choice and move on. You now have the opportunity to practice using this strategy on our sample question. Here it is again. Pause the video, listen to the recording and identify the answers. Write them down so that you can check them later. When you've completed this practice activity, continue the video. I go through the answers next. To hear the recording, click the link in the notes below this video titled The National Arts Centre Recording. Here are the correct answers. The words in brackets are optional. Pause the video while you check them against your own. Then we'll go through them one at a time. Answer 11 is classical music, or concerts. Here's the sentence this answer appears in. It's famous throughout the world as one of the major venues for classical music. A synonym has been used here. Famous instead of well known. Answer 12 is bookshop or a bookshop. Here's the sentence this answer appears in. Under a single roof, it houses concert rooms, theatres, cinemas, art galleries and a wonderful public library, as well as service facilities including three restaurants and a bookshop. This is an easy answer to identify, 
as the facilities are listed in the same order as they appear in the questions, with the missing item, a bookshop, added onto the end. Answer 13 is planned. Here's the sentence. Of course it took a while for such a big project to get started, but it was planned in the 60s, built in the 70s and eventually opened to the public in 1983. The challenge with this answer is knowing that the 60s means the 1960s, that is, the decade between 1960 and 1970. I cover vocabulary related to dates in the lesson on problematic language that I mentioned earlier. Answer 14 is 1983. This answer appears in the same sentence as the last one. The examiners have been kind with this question as the speaker repeats the phrase open to the public as it's written in the notes rather than paraphrasing it. 1980s or the 1980s would also be acceptable as the answer. Answer 15 is city council or the city council. Here's the sentence. Ever since then it has proved to be a great success. It's not privately owned like many art centres but is still in public hands. It's run by the City Council. A synonym has been used here. Run by instead of managed by. City Council is a proper noun so both words must start with a capital letter. Answer 16 is 363. Here's a sentence. And as the centre is open 363 days of the year, there are plenty of performances to choose from. This answer is paraphrased, but it's close enough to what the speaker says that it shouldn't have caused you too much problem. The answer is paraphrased, but it's close enough to what the speaker says that it shouldn't have caused you too much of a problem. The speaker says days of the year, while in the notes days per year is used. If you've got any of the answers wrong, listen to the recording again and see if you can pick them out now that you're more familiar with the text. Now practice using the strategy and tips you've learnt in this lesson on other note completion questions from past papers. Thank you for watching, I'll see you again soon and goodbye for now.